Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, out on another uh, exploration, and I'm back in Stenning. In fact, I'm back on the Stenning Downlands scheme. You may remember I had a wonderful interview with uh, Matthew Thomas, who was showing me around, and then I went to the rifle range, which is behind me. More exciting than Matthew and the rifle range. I'm talking to Francis Sedgwick. Hello, Francis. Hello, Richard. You are interesting and unique because you have um, a wonderful herd of Dexter cows, which you can hear <laughs> in the background, um, who are here feeding on grass. And they are interesting because they're both dairy cows and um, beef cows. Yes. So I want to find out how it all happened, why you've got them, why they're here, okay. all that sort of stuff. Okay. So. <laughs> right. Well, they came about really through my own health issues. Right. I was, I'll just start off a little bit about the health. Yeah, do. Because um, it's important to share that with people. I was born with a condition called Marfan syndrome, which is a connective tissue disorder and affects my skeletal and cardiovascular system. And interestingly, I had open heart surgery in February this year. A personalised um, support was placed around my aorta to stop it um, dissecting, basically. Oh, gosh, that sounds awful. So, um, <laughs> yes, I lost my sister, my veterinary sister, Susanna, two years ago to aortic dissection, and I had Marfan syndrome. <laughs> so I was offered this pioneering surgery, uh, which I had at St Thomas's in January, uh, February. So that was one thing. So I've always kept my life sort of fairly, um, my functionality hasn't been huge. So I've kept it fairly low key, everything. And then in 2007, following a virus and a lot of stress in my life, I was diagnosed with ME. Oh, right. So, so that had a profound effect oh on my Oh my God, health. just load it on. Yes. Yeah, it's nice. So, and before that, um, I had been um, working for the Goodwood Estate for 17 years and I, for 10 years, I did all their, in their farm side of things, I did all the administration, the finance, uh, all the livestock records and um, stewardship schemes. But when I was um, ill with ME, I was unable to work. And alongside that, I had been studying for a degree in countryside management. That's where I learned about the Dexter cattle. So I'd already got a lot of experience on the admin side of looking after um, livestock. So when I was unable to work and try and fit something into my health, I thought I would start my own business, setting up um, organically pasture fed beef. Gosh, um, now, I mean, first of all, one's just got to sort of take that in. There you are with this really horrendous illness that affects your energy levels and Absolutely. your ability to sort of function throughout a whole day mm -hmm. that most people would just take for, for granted. Mm. And then you decide, I know what, I'll take on <laughs> some Dexter cattle. That's um, quite a big thing to do, isn't it? It is, but I chose these because they are hardy nature, their longevity, they can live out. They don't need an awful lot of management. They're pasture fed and I didn't want something that I had to manage every day. Right. Because my condition is so variable, I have days where I can't function, days where I can function a little bit, but everything I do has payback. So these fit in with my health because there's some days where I, um, the, like halving is a busy time, that's only once a year, and then beef, but it fluctuates. So I'm lucky that I can have these beautiful animals in my back garden and I call it Dexter therapy because they have been hugely beneficial to my health and help me manage my condition. So I am well supported, um, but the benefits certainly outweigh the negatives of well, that, trying to I manage mean, my health. That is absolutely incredible. Now, uh, Julia is here. Come over here, Julia, because I know Julia is mad about cows. And um, when I said that I was going to interview you about Dexter, she was uh, hopping up and down. Yeah. Please, 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 can I come? Hopping up and down. Because <laughs> you're doing sustainable farming, yes. effectively. Yeah. And um, in the intensive world, it's a, it's a horrible thing. It is. Um, I mean, the Dexter breed is a slow maturing breed. So they're not, they're extensively farmed. They live a nice natural life eating only 100% 
pasture natural grassland they're browsers as well as grazers so they'll eat the grass but they'll also eat the trees and right. bushes which is beneficial yes um, they're a very hardy nature so they, they get a great big long coat in the ne in the winter and they can live out and they seem very friendly because I, I, I mean I'm quite nervous about uh, <laughs> cattle uh, especially when you see a big herd and they start coming over and it may be that they're just inquisitive but you know, I just worry that if I get knocked over, then there could yeah. be problems. But these guys, I, girls... <laughs> the Dexter does have a very good nature, but it's also is how you handle them. Yes. And I'm out there, as soon as they are born, I'm out there petting the calf, getting it know, so they all know me. And it is funny, as soon as they see me, they bellow and they know it's me and they come running to me and they just love to have a cuddle. And I spend a lot of time just sitting in the field just with them and so that, they get used to that and they're very friendly and I, I suppose most people don't think that cows are can be cuddly because they're because they're of the way that most farming is done they're, they're sort yeah. of they seem to be just abandoned they're either milked and then go back yeah. or, or whatever no, each one has a personality and you see that within the herd that they have their friends and there's a hierarchy system of the matriarch and then they all know where they are like earlier on there was that little red one and another one they were having a little fisticuff but they're just playing and they're also just setting that I'm more dominant than you. right yes and the status their, of, the, of yes. the herd sort of thing um, this group which are all female they've been here uh, together for a while um, and I've got a group of steers elsewhere and then I've got some breeding cows at home who are running with the bull but you get the group and they work out their um, system within that group they can breed um, well my oldest cow which we'll talk about later um, is Meadow Edelweiss who started my herd and she's now 16 and I've had her I started the herd in 2010 and she's she's bred 13 cows and now's the time she's just she didn't give me a calf this year so I think um, she's she's had a good long life um, and then to respect her and it's a really hard decision to make but I'm going to beef her this year um, and have her back for my own personal um, meat so it's it is a really really hard thing for me to do yes I can imagine um, and I'm very emotionally attached to all my cattle and I put a lot of time love and effort into them but I also do the end properly. I take them to the abattoir myself and make sure that it's done as stress-free as possible. And then I also have every part of that animal back. So the hides are produced rugs for people's houses. Wow. Uh, the, all the offal is either sold or I keep myself. The bones are kept for stock or for dogs and all the offcuts I keep back from my dog. So every part of that animal is respected right to the end. Yes, it's and not I wasted only, in any way. No, not at all. And I only supply quality butchers who have the same ethos as me that want to um, respect that animal when it comes to being yes. a carcass. And that, I mean, that's something that I very much want to promote because people, I think, need to be told more and more about this so that there's a bigger demand for proper proper um, farming yeah. and less demand for the huge intensive farming that we have exactly. that that people almost just take the food for granted yeah whereas clearly yeah. you know when you're tucking into your beef you know it's prominence uh, pro provenance yeah. and you've given that meat and that food so much respect yeah well listen we are um my videos are notoriously short um, but we're going to come back and sort of follow the story a bit, um, if that's all right. Absolutely. Um, because there's so much more to, to talk about. There is. There's a lot of links with other things. With, yes. you know, um, so I, I hope that this has whetted your appetite and um, over the next, I suppose, 12 months, whatever, um, we'll be popping back and finding out what you're up to, Francis, which would be fantastic. And of course, great to see you in glowing health, even though inside you may not feel it, <laughs> you look radiant. So uh, and thank you very much. I think that the, uh, the cattle has a great deal to do with that. They do, they make me happy. So thank you so much for showing us around. And uh, if you've enjoyed this, do uh, leave your comments in the comments below, that would be superb. Don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Let us know you want to see more and we will do it. Till next time, thanks for watching, bye bye.
Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.